Hello, my name's Anne and I'm an archivist and I work here at Bristol Archives. At Bristol Archives, we look after documents relating to the history of Bristol. These documents could be on paper or they could be film or sound recordings. Today, I'm going to show you three documents that tell us about medieval Bristol. This is the first document I'd like to show you about medieval Bristol. This is a plan or a map of the centre of medieval Bristol and it was drawn in 1478, so that's over 500 years ago, by a man called Robert Rickart. Robert was the clerk of the city, so his job was to write down important information for the leaders of the city, including the mayor. So what can we see on the map? There are four main streets. These are in the centre of Bristol and they're called Broad Street, Corn Street, Wine Street and the High Street, the four earliest streets in the city. At the end of each street is a gate. Like most towns at the time, the city centre was surrounded by a defensive wall pierced by gates. The only one remaining today is this one, called St John's Gate. There are lots of houses, so we know lots of people were living in the centre of Bristol. Can you see any churches? What does that tell you about the people living in Bristol at the time? Finally, let's talk about the structure right in the middle. This is called the High Cross. It was built in 1373 as a celebration of the king at the time, Edward III. Edward made Bristol special by calling it both a city and a county. The cross had stone carvings of kings on each of the four sides, which tell us how important monarchs were. The high cross is where some criminals were taken to be publicly executed for their crimes. The high cross isn't there today. It was taken away as people thought it was getting in the way. It was rebuilt at a place called Stourhead, which is about an hour's drive from Bristol. So this is the second document I'm going to show you about medieval Bristol. And this document has royal connections. This document is known as the Baker's Charter. It was made in 1347, so it's nearly 700 years old. And because of that, we have to keep it in a special box. A charter is an official document that's issued from a king giving someone powers or rights. This charter was issued by Edward III, who was the king at the time. The first thing you'll probably notice is this big round thing, which is hanging off the bottom of the document. This is called a seal and it's made of wax. And if you look, you can see there's a man holding a sword and he's riding a horse. That's the king, that's Edward III. And this seal proves that the document is official. The second thing you'll probably notice is in the top corner of the document, there's this little, very beautiful illustration. This is known as an illumination and it's called that because the paint that they've used is gold, so it's really shiny and bright. And if you look carefully, you can see that there's a big letter E and that E is for Edward. So what does the document say? What's it about? It's basically the king telling the mayor and the law keepers of Bristol that they now have permission to imprison what the king calls evildoers and disturbers of the peace. These are people found wandering around the city at night. Imagine a medieval city with narrow streets and no street lighting. This is a measure to keep the residents of the city safe at night. The illustration shows an evildoer being rounded up and imprisoned. The charter also says that bakers in Bristol can be punished if they break a thing called the Assize of Bread. That was a special law 
which said that a loaf of bread had to be a certain size, a certain weight and cost a certain amount of money. It was basically to stop bakers from ripping off the public by overcharging for bread. Bread was one of the staple foods at the time. The punishment for bakers who didn't follow the rules was to be pulled through the street on a sledge, a kind of public humiliation. This is the final document I'd like to show you about life in medieval Bristol. And this document is my favourite document. It doesn't look as fancy as the others though, but it's got a really good story. So this is another handwritten document. It's written in Latin again, and it's on animal skin. And it's about two men called Simon and John, who are neighbours, but they have a big falling out. And the falling out is so bad that they have to go to the mayor's court for the mayor to decide who's right and who's wrong. And this all happened in 1401. So it's after the Baker's Charter, but it's before we see the plan that's drawn in uh, by Rickart. So what's the story about? Well, there are two men called John and Simon and their neighbours. They both live on a street called Worship Street or the Shambles. And that's very near to the streets that we looked at earlier in Rickart's plan. John is very wealthy and he lives in a nice big house on the street. And further along, Simon is a butcher and he runs his butcher's business on the street as well. Now in the medieval city, there weren't sewers like there are today. So all the rubbish and the filth from all the houses ran out through little gutters and it went along a main gutter which went along the middle of the road. So John was angry because he thought that Simon on purpose had blocked up the gutter that ran along the middle of the road and that meant that all the animal blood and bones and goo and yuckiness that was coming from the butchers was running down the sewer, the gutter in the middle of the road but it was stopping just outside John's house. So you can imagine that every day when he came out of his front door, there was a big pool of yuckiness there and it was really stinky and horrible. And all that's described in the document. So John and Simon can't decide whose fault this is. So they take it to the mayor's court and the mayor and some important men in the city then go and they look at the street and they look at the blocked gutter and they decide, yes, it was Simon's fault. He did block the gutter. And that means that Simon has to pay a fine and give John some money. Now, originally, John had said that this was such a bad situation and it was causing him so much distress that he should be given £40, which is an awful lot of money in the medieval period. With £40, you could buy about 31 horses. But in the end, the mayor and the burgesses decide that Simon needs to pay John three pounds, which in today's money is the equivalent to about 1,800 pounds, and that would only get you three horses. So these three documents highlight the differences from the Bristol that we live in today and the Bristol of around 600 years ago. The king, not parliament, held ultimate power. People were very religious. Punishments for crimes were very different. A different language was used to write things down. However, these documents do allow us to travel back in time and see that people in medieval Bristol were very similar to people in Bristol today, trying to live peacefully alongside each other in a busy and crowded city.